Hi again. My name is Rebel and I'm the Rebel Reseller. And today I'm going to be doing another one of my ship with me's. I'm going to try to do it every couple of weeks. Um, just, um, there's a lot of interest in it on just how I go about doing all of my shipping. Um, I've got quite a bit today that I'm going to share. I may not show all of it, but I'll show quite a few of it. Just the different types of things and I'll, I guess, explain my reasoning on how I ship things the way I do. Um, but if you're new to my channel, I get a lot of questions about my shipping rates and how I sit, set them up. Um, everything gets started on eBay, but I do use List Perfectly to transfer or to cross list to other platforms. But um, I just, I have it set up that everything I list you know, I process everything, I write it in a spreadsheet, and I weigh it. And I know based on what it is and how I plan on shipping it, how much about the shipping is going to be, the shipping weight. So for first class, I do flat rate shipping. I have found that if you use the calculated shipping on eBay, the price is just really up there. So I use, based on just experience, I use flat rate. <clears throat> and what I do is if it's zero to four ounces I charge four dollars and fifty cents if it's uh, five to eight ounces I charge 475 if it's you're gonna get that if it's nine to twelve ounces I charge 575 and if it's um, 13 ounces up to 16 ounces I charge 675 and that pretty much um, leaves me with just a slight profit after I pay for everything, all the shipping, which helps me cover the cost of shipping supplies. I buy a lot of shipping supplies. I just find it's easier to buy all the size boxes that I prefer to use instead of trying to go out, you know, and source boxes from, you know, Walmart or Walgreens or where everybody else goes to look. Now, I still do use some like Amazon boxes and stuff. I do keep all of that. Well, when um, we were doing this years ago, though, we actually got a lot of boxes that way because we were starting out in... When you're starting out, it's an expense to order shipping supplies. So, you know, anytime you're going grocery shopping, um, and that's what we would... When I would go, I'd, I'd go in the evenings when they're starting to restock their shelves, and I would just start getting boxes. Um, but... Now, I just pretty much, I buy a whole lot of the 4x4s, the 4x6s, the 8x6x4s, and just, because I use so many of them. The time we would spend sourcing boxes is better spent sourcing things to sell or Exactly, to sell. yeah. So, that's kind of, and then if it's priority, I use calculated shipping based on, you know, the buyer's address, um, and I do primarily use priority shipping but if it's large or heavy then I do include UPS as an option and I've mentioned this before I don't think I have any books to ship this time but even with like books and media don't only keep it to media mail not everybody wants their stuff shipped media mail also include first class shipping and priority shipping if it's over a pound because you, the longer something sits in the postal system, the more chances of it getting lost or damaged. And well, some people use pirate ship. Mm -hmm. We, some people say they get better rates on pirate ship, but based on what we ship and where we ship it to, it's almost the same. It, it's basically same. equal. eBay is going to be a nickel higher one time, and pirate ship is going to be a nickel higher the next time. It, it, so it works out to a wash, and it's just simpler to not look everything up in both places. Exactly. If we're shipping something large, we'll check. Something heavy, we'll check. But there are some people that say they get better rates on pirate ship than they do through eBay for some reason or another. Maybe it's their location. We're not sure what, but that might be a place for you to look to see if it's any cheaper for you. Yep. All right. I'm not really going to tell you what, you know, show you everything that's sold. Um, we have tried to not pre-pack, but get everything ready so that this video won't be as long and the editing won't be as tedious for Robert. So we've got it set out, um, but some of it has already been taped up in bubble wrap. 
Um, but this is more about telling you why I'm shipping things the way I'm shipping things. All right. But the first thing I went ahead and picked and hasn't been prepacked is I sold a coffee mug, ceramic coffee mug. And this is how we do it. Now, everybody's going to have their own way. And um, some people will disagree with the way we ship. But I'm sure you've watched other videos and you're like, oh, no, 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 no. I would never ship that way. I'm just going to show you how I ship. But Robert came up with this handy dandy way of shipping coffee mugs because oftentimes what gets damaged the handle so what we've been doing is we use a whole lot of air pillows so if you haven't been using air pillows um i wouldn't say don't put it in stuff that's super heavy and when it it's gonna pop them but for just filler we use air pillows a lot um but we you take two air pillows and we wrap it around the handle so the handle is inside of this and then we take three pieces of bubble I use I use a lot of the large bubble but I do have small bubbles too but I prefer the large bubbles for almost everything that I ship if you're gonna hoard those they're medium bubbles yes these are yeah I say large bubbles but I think when you look it up like we use American bubble boy of course um, and I think it's on there as medium bubbles but three sheets of large bubble wrap and then what I do is just roll it in here Preferably straight. yeah I'm not even seeing this properly let me start over here we go now I got it figured out Center it in there, and then roll it, and by the time you get it all the way rolled around, you've got at least two bubbles, layers of bubble wrap on all the sides, and then we just tape it. And then tape that side, tape these two sides. And this is going to fit in one of the small priority boxes. So I'm going to go ahead and hand this off to Robert. Small priority, and Robert can finish that off. There are but, some people that I'm too, I, I overbuild things. So there are people that bubble wrap this and then put it in like a rolled up box. Or a something. rolled up box. That's, that's not taped in a cube it's ta it's it's taped around the this box thing kind of i don't know how they do it but it ends up that it, they can get cups in for under a pound instead of being in the one to two pound category uh, i don't but it is a good system for those who want to use it but i don't um i was going to say something and now you made me forget Blaming me for your memory. Exactly. It's all your fault. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to pick some more things. Like I said, we've already got most of it in their packages. This was just two little, um, like, Mike and Sully action figure type thingies. If it's an action figure of any kind, a hard toy that has, like, limbs, anything... I do not, do not recommend you put them in poly bags or even bubble mailers. They could potentially get damaged and you're going to have an unhappy buyer. So I always pack these. And also, oh, I remember what I was going to say now, but it is with this too. When you finish packing your boxes, make sure nothing rattles. Just, to, I mean, if you got a puzzle or Legos, they're going to rattle, but you know, don't let them be loosey-gooseys in the box. And the other thing I highly recommend is when you're taping boxes, I buy I buy this stuff from Walmart. It's the Duck Easy Start. But any tape that you buy, you run the risk of it once it gets on the cardboard, especially if it's humid or cold or damp or raining, that it starts coming off. So what we do is we make sure we tape the one side, and then when you go to tape the other side, make sure 
your tape overlaps on the side because it doesn't tend to come loose at all when you've got tape on tape. And this way you don't have to do a whole lot of taping, you know, over and over, just trying to make sure that your tape doesn't come loose and your box comes opened. If you just overlap it on each side, it's going to be very sturdy for you. And the, I have never seen the tape peel loose under any weather conditions. So just a recommended. And then I have like this plush. It has one of those um, like teething rings on it. Again, I just do not like putting these type plush in um, bubbles or poly bags. I, I'm going to use a box. I go through a ton of boxes. Um, this is one of my favorite sizes. It's the 8 by 6 by 4 No, the 6 by 6 by 4 I use it a lot. Oh, is it 6 by 4 by 4 It's one of them. But, you know, we have links down in our description of all the, especially the shipping supplies that we like to use. So, I'm just going to put this in there. And then I'm going to put an air pillow just so it's not going to be moving around in the box. Same thing here. This, this was actually, somebody ordered two different things. Oh, and the point I want to make on this, I know people don't like waiting for their payments. This person bought two things from me and sent me a message saying that they would, would it be okay if they pay me, um, a few days past the four days. This is why I don't have the four day assistance that eBay has where you can set it up that it'll automatically close because you know they asked should they have asked ahead of time maybe but it does not bother me at all to wait on payment because almost always they do pay especially the ones that ask can they pay on their payday and believe me I've waited two weeks for somebody to get paid it, you know, it is sold, and my experience is, is they do end up um, paying. So, um, so if you, yeah, there's some people who just insist at four days they're going to cancel it. But if I don't get any contact from somebody, I am the type that I wait to the minute that I can go ahead and close it. I don't have it set up for eBay to do it, but at the four day mark in one minute I, I do I'll close it and they go on my block bitter list because if I'm not going to get contact at all then they're not going to purchase for me again so this person bought two things um they didn't no I did on this one I sent an invoice that's the other good thing about when they make offers like this then you have the chance to send them an invoice because it's not set up automatically for them to have to pay right away. I don't have that. Um, and then I'm just, uh, I've got another one though that if they don't wait for me to send an invoice, I always do send a refund on the overage of shipping. Oh, I thought you were waiting on me for something. And yes, I do reuse boxes. This was, I actually think it was a return, but it's just a Christmas ornament. Again, I'm going to wrap it. I hadn't yet. Wrap it all in the bubble wrap. I tend to tape them because if they're not going to be loose in the box, but if you're not going to fill the box up so that it doesn't shake, it could just actually shake right out of this. Um, so I'm, I will end up taping it, and then I'll probably put an air pillow on top of it just so there's no shaking at all. And if it's something breakable, taping it will, when the person opens the box and pulls it out by exactly. the plastic, the breakable item doesn't just tumble out on the floor because it's not taped up inside. It's not the taped, wrap. yeah. And it happens, it happens. And especially, you know, it comes and they let their child open it and they just grab that bubble wrap and, you know, that thing and pull it out and it, it could potentially fall. Now this, this is a hoodie that I sold and it was going to be over a pound 
And this is how I do my clothing that's over a pound. I set it for priority shipping, but I don't pick flat rate envelope, flat rate anything. I just set it for priority. And then when I go to make, print this out uh, or do my shipping on like this, um, I can choose which type of priority. You know, if it was smaller, I might pick the, um, the, the cardboard flat rate envelope, um, which is practically the cheapest. But I charge a flat rate. If it's going to be um, one, to two one to two pounds, we charge $8.99 shipping for priority clothing only, just for clothing. For everything else, it's um, calculated. But we do flat rate for clothing. And it's eight ninety nine for mo yeah for most of the clothing unless you got if if it won't fit in this for sure like a big old coat or whatever then I do calc calculated shipping even on them and that way when I go to pack it in like a large priority box or whatever I'm not you know getting surprised when I ship to California because I think this was going to be California and. They only paid $8.99, but when I go to look at my shipping label um, choices, their shipping would have been $13 to ship this to California. But this way I have the option of choosing if it would fit in the cardboard. I could use the bubble, which it's like $8.30 to ship this. But sometimes the um, regular priority shipping is cheaper than this. It'll be like $8.27 if it's somewhere near me. Three cents, yes, but I don't have to use one of my bubbles. Sometimes these get hard to get, um, and I can just use a regular um, priority box, just one of the, you know, the rectangle ones that are thin. So, you know, make sure you're checking your priority as far as what's going to be the cheapest way for you to ship it because there's several choices and even like for me I do the flat rate but you know it's a difference between yeah you know, and I think sometimes even uh, these can be under eight dollars not these but priority shipping can be under eight dollars which saves me like you know 30 or 40 cents from shipping in this so just rem remember that just keep it plain priority don't pick any of the flat rates or anything like that as long as it fits as long as it's going to fit in this if it's going to fit in a it has to go in a box or whatever i don't normally put large clothing items in poly bags i just don't they're too bulky they're just run the risk i i just don't i mean and i have large ones but normally if it's going to get fat like that I'm going to end up putting it in either a shoe box or the large priority box. I did sell two clothing items on Poshmark. I love Poshmark and almost always I just throw these into the, um, the flat rate bubbles. Just easy. Easy peasy. All right. Christmas ornament. Box. Always just box it. Here's this. Robert's already pre-packed it. It's like an American flag Christmas ornament wrapped around, secured with tape. Then I put the bubble, the side that has the most bubble, down. And then we're going to use a filler bubble. A, what do we call it? Oh, an air pillow. And then there's no, you know, shaking around at all for it. Right. And then, oh, I sold, I sold a Yadro. I picked it up. I've talked about it. I think in my live, I picked up two Yadros at an estate sale for two bucks each. One of these, this one was like a little, um, an Eskimo a little boy with a polar bear. I think I had it listed 45 or so dollars, but on eBay, I just kept getting $20 offer, $20 offer, $20 offer. I don't have the original box. So, um, I got, I ended up getting an offer this morning on Mercari for $37. So I just decided to go ahead and take it. 
Um, but Robert's already pre-packed it. Lots of bubbles all the way around it. I'll probably put... Oops. Oh, on and lost my... There it is. Oops. I'll probably take two more bubbles and line the inside of the box. Just one more level of protection. And then these are Robert's ideas. Newspaper crumbled up in like one of your grocery bags. And then we just stuff it. Finish filling in the rest of that box. And then I'll just tape it shut. But we, we sometimes do this. Robert tends to do this more. I bought a bunch of this, the newsprint. And it's often, just because I don't want to deal with newspaper and getting it on my fingers, a lot of times I use that just to fill it in. Robert pre-packed this. This is a bop it. It's a little handheld game and it starts telling you how, you know, you're going to pull things, push things, you know, twist things. Um, it's one of the large ones. And so he's already pre-packed it in bubbles and then put a layer of the air pillows on top. And then Robert always cuts boxes down. I don't always cut them down. Sometimes I just kind of fill them with more dunnage, but then you're adding weight to it. Um, but see, cut the box down just a little bit, and then we'll tape it shut. Now, when I we cut it down like this, then usually I end up taping here and then, you know, a couple of stripes over on this one. But I'll do especially the one down the middle to match up with this one. I just don't want these extra seams loose, so I will just tape over them. And if I'm paying attention and not being lazy, I'll cut that top flap so that it is in the middle and it only takes one piece of tape. So hand that back there you go. Middle. All right. And then I have a whole lot of poly bags and bubble mailers. I'll just show you. This is my um this is my bubble mailer. Some plush I just choose. Sometimes it's just like this. He's a little bit stiff. Not in nothing on him that would I would worry about getting damaged. But I, I like these bubble mailers that we get. I think I get mine from either the box free or value mailers. I go back and forth depending on which one is cheaper, right? It's about which one's the less. But I think these came from the boxery. They're nice. They're more stiff. And so I'll just put them in that. We have uh, affiliate links in the video description for those. And what is there is what we bought last time. And sometimes the, last the time. prices fluctuate. So the next time we buy, we might have to go instead of value mailers, we might buy from the box for next time. But when you click on the affiliate links, always compare to the other one to the make sure one. that they are currently the, the best price. But yeah, I go back and forth with them. But I think recently, though, I've been buying almost everything from the Boxery. And they're amazing because I almost always get my order within two days. Like, I realized Friday, Thursday, Friday, that I'm getting low on a couple of my clear poly bags. So I went ahead and placed an order. And more than likely, it'll get delivered tomorrow. So, Which is Monday. Yeah, Monday. Yeah, it's Sunday here. All right. And then, like here, this is just a, a plain old large plush. I ship, I store everything. Everything that I list goes in a clear bag, whether it's these type clear bags. Um, yes, I use sandwich bags for itty bitties. I use the Walmart twist tie bags if... Um, I need, like if I've listed four of something individually and I've got a quantity of four, I'll put them in this because I need to open up the bag, that type of stuff. Um, 
but everything it's just once I have it cleaned and I've had my pictures I just prefer that it be bagged um, and then it also helps get stuff in here and I really think your customers your buyers prefer knowing that there's the extra protection that if this got left out in the rain um, we've had packages delivered I ain't gonna say which service but they laid them on the floor I mean on the ground underneath our mailbox you never know what's going to happen so just having two levels of protection on everything you know I just prefer that plus when you're storing stuff you don't have to worry about dust getting on it critters because my stuff stored in a building you know I get wasps out there quite often um, just things like that I don't want anything getting in my stuff so and then this one I'll just put in a regular poly bag I have lots of sizes these are my shipping ones and they go anywhere from six by nine um, and then I have actually a really large bag right there that you can see and it's like 18 by 24 I don't use it very often but every once in a while I have a really fluffy plush that I don't have to and that's gonna stay under the one pound and then I'll ship it in that All right, another plush no a shirt this is a shirt again I weigh everything so clothing that's like shirts and um, some like children's jeans and stuff if it can be shipped first class I list it as first class and then I still use my regular um, rates the 475 575 675 and then just ship them in polys this is a stocking um, Minnie Mouse she's got these hard plastic eyes a lot of times I don't worry too much about the eyes um, like for instance I've got this bear and he does have plastic eyes but when I put him in the bag, I tend to put them sideways like this. And I'm, I'm not too worried about them because, you know, it's everything's around it. And the eye, the head is actually, the eyes are actually more in. But this one, it's, it's going to be right here on this. So I'm going to use a poly. You know, if it had been a little bit heavier and needed to... Um, be ship priority then I would just put it in a priority box but I'm just putting it in the bubble and shipping it this way now this is a little plush that sold it's was it's it's soft but it's foamy and I just don't think it would be wise to ship this like in a poly bag it's um, Manhattan toy but I'm afraid if it stayed compressed like this being shipped you know in a poly bag that it might not fluff back up it I could be wrong but four by four by four and that way it's just in there and I don't have to worry about it being squished for so long because think about it this this stuff doesn't stay in small little IKEA bags for their they're put in these huge containers and this poor little plush could be on the bottom and you know, pack it so that it's going to withstand any heavy stuff on top of it all right this is little people furniture dollhouse furniture again i always wrap everything in this is the small bubbles and i put them in a box it's just I wouldn't run the risk of them being broken I think it would take a lot to break these but you don't want to run that risk so ship it in a small box now this is a plush that sold but he's got a paper tag hard rock cafe I'm gonna box it I don't want to run the risk of that tag getting damaged um, so you know this is an eight by six by four I love this size it does I send a lot of like meat not 
really medium but plush like this that I want to protect the tags. Even the Thai Beanie Butt Babies, I usually ship them in a box if they've got that little paper ear tag. I just don't want it damaged. Another plush um, vintage. I could put it in a box. I have the 12 by 6 by 6 but it's going to be fine shipped in a bubble. I can't tell you why sometimes I'll say a bubble. I just, I have my reasons. It could be just because it's vintage and they are near and dear. I put them in a ball, uh, a poly bag. Um, yeah, in a poly mailer. Bubble. In a, or a bubble. Loveys, almost always I ship them in this. If they've got a rattle in them, test it. See if it's got plenty of cushioning. Then I might put it in a bubble. Um, but sometimes, if it's not a whole lot of cushioning, I would put it in a box. But this one doesn't even have a rattle. So I just mail them in a poly. Another clothing item. It's going to be shipped first class. Are you breaking stuff? Oh, yeah. I'll be doing that right now. I want people to hear that and think I'm angry at throwing things. He broke some dishes pulling stuff out of the car the other day, so he's chopping them up into... He's cutting them. He's cutting them and going to sell it as like a craft kit thing. I don't know how that works. That's all new to me. Finger puppet, kind of, sort of, puppet. Not much to worry about on him, so he just went in a poly bag. This is a lovey that has a rattle in the head. It does have quite a bit of cushioning right here. Bubble. Not a poly bag. I just... If it was, if it was thinner, you'd probably use a box though, right? Right, and I said that, yeah. If it was a thinner material around it, or if it had like a sound box in it, put it in a box. And I think one more plush, just a gun, little teddy bear, no rattle or anything. So I put it in a poly. I think that's it. That was not so bad. I hopefully this will be a whole lot more, you know, not so much chopping as Robert has had to do in the past. I think this is going to work better for all of us. I don't know about y'all, but it's going to work way better for me. <laughs> Yeah, and then all now I've got to do is finish sealing up everything and print out the labels. There was no me having to search through um, a whole list of things, trying to find the labels, get them printed, and all of that stuff. I'll just print them out here um, tomorrow morning. I hope this was helpful. You know, send me some comments. Anything that you've had to pack that you weren't quite sure about or when you've had... A different idea of something that you would have you know packed this way just share it in the comments we all learn from each other tell us how we're doing it wrong yeah tell me if you think I'm doing it wrong definitely it doesn't it hurt, hurt my feelings it, it, it does her not feelings and makes her cry no it does and not then... doesn't hurt my feelings and you know we might learn something from it so but you know I've been doing this 23 years and before this in my other life I was actually an inventory man manager in the United States Navy, and I packed, you know, millions of dollars of parts and stuff. So I kind of have a little experience, just a little. But, um, yeah. All right. Bye.